Now let's go to the women in China, or at least the woman who is forever linked with China. Looking east and looking west, no one could compete with her. For decades, she was the queen of the Chinese TV screen. From PBS reporter to Chinese TV personality, this Chinese-American bridged the two cultures as China opened up to the world. Yu Sai Khan was the first non-Chinese citizen to host a TV series in China. One World, that's called, on CCTV brought in 300 million viewers at its peak in the 1980s. Even today, many from the 80s generation credit Yu Sai with introducing them to the wider world. Of course, Yu Sai's story did not begin in China, but back in America. As a child of Hong Kong immigrants, this Amy Award winner has truly lived the American dream. Her pioneering series, Looking East on PBS, introduced Asian cultures and customs to an increasingly receptive American audience. From there, she would go on to report live from Beijing on 35th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. I visited her in Beijing, where she continues to keep her finger on the pulse of what she calls the extraordinary changes taking place here. She's a great storyteller, and certainly she has a lot of great stories to tell. Our interview began with her recounting the 1984 broadcast of the Chinese National Day Parade. She hosted for PBS live from Beijing. I didn't have any idea about those, and I had to do research. Now today, when you're talking about doing research, it's so simple. You can just go on the internet, you, know, find, you can find everything. I had to find out very, very difficult, with difficulty, how many people in the Liberation Army, what is the Chinese Navy like in those days? It was very secretive then. Yeah, very difficult to do those things. But, but anyway, so I had to do a, a lot of research. Was it like a learning process for you also about China? When, when, a, when a parade came through, you know, uh, uh, they would say uh, a standard Beijing family. Standard Beijing family was a float that came through. Beijing, <laughs> Beijing, <laughs> and, and for a lot of Westerners, they had no idea what is that. First of all, it's in Chinese. So I had to say, uh, Standard uh, um, Beijing family, what is it? Standard? It has a mother and a father, one child. So they were having those on the trucks, right? Yes. To have actors on the trucks to demonstrate what is the typical Beijing family. That was fun. Like, like, like when the farmer's float came by. The farmer's float came by with the line says, 50 years will not change, 50 years will not change the policy for the farmers to own their land, right? So that, those are the things that I was supposed to do, you know, and, and I, didn't have to, I didn't have to invent anything. It's such an interesting story. So it's like uh, yin guo, you know, you do One something, you lead to another, another, and if it is good, then it comes to something good. So because of my years of doing looking east, the, 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 the program director of PBS found out about me mm -hmm. and asked me to host the 35th. And then the 5th, 35th anniversary led to the, the, the Chinese One World. One world yeah. Even today, think just to think about that. Well, it was, like, um, it was exciting because it was like walking on the moon. Mm. I mean, we are trying to tr attempt to do something that had never been done before. And when you are doing something, particularly in media, nothing that, that hasn't been done before, it was, it was actually scary. I, I said to myself that because, you know, CCTV did not have money. In those days, there was not even one single ad. Now today, when you look at the auction of the advertising slot for CCTV, right, news for the advertising slot, I mean, they're just so extraordinarily expensive. Why? Because you know there are many things the Chinese want to buy, and there is consumerism. In those days, there was no one selling, well, a few, selling things in China. Who are they? Coca-Cola. Mm. Uh, Coca-Cola came in really early. Procter & Gamble. Procter & Gamble. I remember Procter & Gamble um, wanted to be our sponsor, and I had to get the approval for it. And the Chinese government said that we are so sorry, we cannot approve Procter & Gamble because we don't approve gambling. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> now, with that, that also, so it's so funny, right? I mean, uh, because they had no money to give me to produce the series, and I know that this is a wonderful opportunity for me as a television journalist. Uh, I know that if I, if I 
if I don't do it well. What an extraordinary waste of opportunity. Maybe that was the only window. That was a lot of pressure for you. Then. Of course, of course. I would get, I was skinnier than you. I got to be so skinny during the four years.